Glory continues its swing through Europe after stops in Brussels and Copenhagen. Title fights in 2017 have taken place in the middleweight, light heavyweight, lightweight, and welterweight divisions. Glory now heads home to the Netherlands for Glory 41 Holland, featuring Robin Van Roosmalen in the featherweight division as he begins his quest to hold two titles at the same time eventually in Glory. Plus, Rico Verhoeven returns to the Glory ring for the first time since beating Fader Hari at Glory Collision as he faces the tank, Ismail Lazar, in the main event of the Super Fight Series. The heavyweights will also be featured in the four-man contender tournament. On this edition of Inside Glory, we'll take a look back at Glory 40 Copenhagen, recap the seven weight divisions, take a look at the entire card that makes up the Super Fight Series and Glory 41, as well as highlight the two heavyweight battles that will take center stage. Inside Glory starts now. Welcome to Inside Glory, I'm Todd Grisham. The middleweight division saw change at the top once again as Simon Marcus took back the belt he lost from Jason Wilness at Glory 33 New Jersey by winning the title rematch. You can bet a third title fight is already being planned. Before we look ahead to Glory 41, let's take one look back at Glory 40 Copenhagen. Yes, this fight is a uh, little bit more personal. As he was acting tough uh, when I was fighting uh, last. He was uh, yelling and uh, acting wild and uh, stuff like he's, uh, he's in the position to do that. But actually he's not, you know, he need to stay in his lane. Now he's going to, uh, to get knocked out. Huh? I'm the champ, I'm the one, I'm coming for my belt. You're going to look simple, you're going to look like you suck. Because you do, you know what I mean? You're, you're a simple walk-up fighter. You ain't got much to you, and I'm going to expose you. Once again, uh, we welcome you to the official weigh-ins for Glory 40 Copenhagen. My name is Tim Hughes, and uh, it is more than a pleasure to be back. In an epic trilogy of fights between these two, they've won one apiece. 83.2 for Simon Marcus. Jason Wilness fighting out of Utrecht, the Netherlands. 84.2 for Jason Wilness. How are you going to win the belt? By kicking his ass. This personal, you know, and uh, and I want to knock his ass out. That's uh, what I get paid for. Both exchanging kicks. Another low kick from Wilness. Simon continuing with those kicks. Wilness throwing right back. Simon Marcus may be a little hurt here. Glory 41 Holland begins with the four-man heavyweight tournament. That's followed by a featherweight division battle between Chen Longzheng of China going up against Wilson Sanchez Mendez. The co-main event at Glory 41 features a classic heavyweight battle between two bitter rivals as six-ranked Heskey Gerges takes on ninth-ranked Chai Lewis Perry. That's followed by the Super Fight Series which starts in the featherweight division. Up next, the lightweights, as number 10 ranked Tazani Bastati goes up against Yusef Asuk. Then it's time for the light heavyweights to do battle, as Tunisia's Marat Bouzidi takes on the hard-hitting Michael Dute of the Netherlands. In welterweight actions, one of the most talented fighters on the entire glory roster, fourth ranked Myrtle Gruenhardt takes on Argentina's Alan Scheinson. And in the co-main event of the Super Fight Series, the featherweight championship of the world will be on the line as Ruben Van Roosmalen faces Thailand's Pech Panamarong Kiat Mukau. And in the main event, a five-round clash between Glory heavyweight champion Rico Verhoeven and former heavyweight champion of Infusion, Ismail Lazar, will be making his Glory debut, and he promises to shock the kickboxing world. Up next on Inside Glory, we'll update the seven weight divisions within Glory and later turn our fighter spotlight on the heavyweight champion of the world, Rico Verhoeven. 
Welcome back to Inside Glory. What makes Glory Kickboxing unique is many events feature not one, but two title fights. That along with the contender tournament creates rivalries, rematches, and current champions defending their crown more times per year than most other combat sports. In December 2016, the inaugural Women's Super Bantamweight Tournament came to a close at Glory Collision in Germany. American time bomb Tiffany Van Seuss battled her way to three straight victories to take the title and be crowned the first ever division champion. She looks to make her first defense of her title later this year. In the featherweight division, the new year came with a surprise when newly crowned champion and ex-lightweight champ Roman Van Roosmalen failed to make weight in his first title defense and by glory rules was stripped of the belt. Fast forward to Glory 39 Brussels and four top featherweights lined up in a contender tournament for a chance to challenge the Dutchman for the vacant belt. A series of close fought contests saw ex-champ and favorite Ukrainian Sergei Adamchuk face off against experienced Thai Petch Panamarong in the final. It was another close affair with the hands of Adamchuk facing the legwork of Petch Panamarong. It eventually went to the judges with a split decision favoring the tie. He will meet Van Roosmalen in his hometown of Den Bosch for Glory 41 Holland in May. Russell saw another tie. The killer kid Sidichai defend the lightweight belt for the second time as he took on contender tournament winner Dylan Salvador. The two Muay Thai stylists, both Southpaws, looked evenly matched. Salvador scoring success in the early rounds, matching the champion's output. But Sidichai turned up the pace with relentless trademark knees to the midsection, and the Frenchman began to wilt. This all proved too much for Salvador as he succumbed to one devastating knee too many and folded in the fourth, failing to beat the count and ending the fight with a KO victory and another successful defense for Sidichai. With the welterweight division still reeling from the shock defeat of Nikki Holskin at Glory Collision, New champion Cedric Dumbe faced his first challenger in the form of Johan Congolo of Switzerland. The Frenchman began the fight early, several weeks early in fact, baiting the already furious Congolo on social media in the buildup. By the time they met in the ring at Glory 39, the difference in attitude was clear. Dumbe proceeded to give a master class in reading an opponent's mind with the emotional Swiss fighter walking into every trap set or watching in disbelief as Dumbe evaded and sidestepped with extraordinary reflexes. It's a risky tactic, especially against a dangerous opponent, but it paid off in style as the smiling Frenchman took a unanimous win and looks set to continue to shake up the division for some time to come. At Glory 40 Copenhagen, one of the great rivalries played out in a rubber match in the middleweight division as Simon Marcus challenged the man who took his belt, reigning champion Jason Psycho Wilness. There's no love loss between the two, with Marcus still smarting from a stunning defeat to the Dutchman at Glory 33. His shameless showboating underestimated the power of Wilness and ultimately cost him the title. This time out, it was all business, with Marcus showing respect to the reigning champion absorbing the Dutchman's forward pressure and countering time and time again. Still, the two seem very evenly matched in fitness and output. In what was Glory's most closely contested title match of the year, Simon Marcus regained the belt by the narrowest of margins. And this time, he has no intention of giving it back anytime soon. Marcus Willness looks set to become a true kickboxing saga and with the potential of a third title fight between these two warriors, the real winners will be the fans. The light heavyweight saw Artem Bahitov recapture the title at Glory 35 Nice. His first defense was at Glory 38 Chicago, and the Russian put on a devastating display in a rubber match against Brazilian Salo Cavallari. The Brazilian launched a furious attack in the first round, but the composed Bahitov was unfazed and in the second took Cavallari apart with precision strikes to drop the Brazilian twice, the fight being stopped before a third knockdown caused more damage. On current form, the Russian looks unstoppable, but first to try will be another impressive Brazilian contender tournament winner, Ariel Machado. And to top it all off, heavyweight superstar Rico Verhoeven continued his winning streak through 2016. After defending his belt twice more, the battle everyone wanted to see finally happened 
as Verhoeven took on the bad boy, Bader Hari, in a battle of champions many labeled old school versus new school. The fight was looking to be a classic before Bader Hari had to retire after suffering an injury to his right arm in the second round, giving Verhoeven a TKO win. Both fighters have verbally agreed to a rematch, so stay tuned. With big wins at Glory 38 and 39 respectively, top contenders Benjamin Adekui and Jamal Ben Sadiq are lining up for a title shot. But the question still remains, can anyone topple the kickboxing king? We'll find out later this year. Coming up a bit later on inside Glory, we'll spotlight our heavyweight champion, Rico Verhoeven. But up next, we'll preview the next great rivalry in the heavyweight division, Hesti Gerges and Chai Lewis Perry. Plus, we'll review all things heavyweights as I'm joined by my broadcast partner, Joseph Baltolini. The big guns are out for Glory 41 Super Fight Series. Coming off his historic win against Bader Hari, the king of kickboxing returns. Undisputed heavyweight champ Rico Verhoeven puts his 12-fight win streak on the line against Moroccan Ismail Lazar. Nicknamed the Tank with a chin of steel, Lazar likes to crush his opponents with well-timed bombs and body shots. Glory 41 Super Fight Series at the Brabant Holland Den Bosch, Saturday, May 20th. Don't miss it. One of the things that makes Glory must-see TV is rivalries. With seven weight divisions consisting of the top kickboxers in the world, rivalries develop as quickly as knockouts. The latest comes from the heavyweight division as Hesti Gerges and Chai Lewis Perry prepare to do battle at Glory 41 Holland. When Hesti Gerges and Chai Lewis Perry arrived in Brussels for Glory 39 fight week, things were nothing but friendly between the two. I actually like the guy, so uh, that's the reason there's been no real trash talk. Good luck to Hesti. Good luck, buddy. But somewhere along the way, that changed. I'm gonna break him mentally, you know, I'm gonna give him so much pain that he, uh, he don't want to fight anymore. But good luck with that, because you're gonna eat punches trying to do it. That's just a fact. I'm gonna take a leg kick, you're gonna take a right hand. It's, it's gonna happen. During the official weigh-ins one day before the fight, the tension between the two giants was palpable. <laughs> Nice stare down there. Okay. How does this fight end? First. On the morning of the fight, Chai Lewis Perry complained of feeling ill, but decided he was fit enough to fight. But just moments before both fighters were called into the ring, the Englishman pulled out of the fight after all. As for the reason why, opinions vary. Some really strange things. Uh, my opponent uh, said that his gloves is uh, too, too tight, too tight. I have also big hands. I fit them and uh, we offer them uh, some new gloves. But uh, he didn't want to fight anymore because uh, I think he's scared. I saw already at the way in that he was, he was scared. So I'm, I'm made to look like the bad guy. Like, oh, I, I can't fit into a glove. You know, it's like, uh, can you fit yourself into a tight hole? Mm. Probably not, because I'm a big guy. So. The solution is the fight is off, and um, I'm not accepting any of that responsibility. And now you got everybody and their granddad, excuse my language, coming in here trying to trying to make me feel like I'm not trying, and they're trying to give me every every Joe Public huge glove and little gloves and Velcro gloves and all this. Ball. That's just not professional to me. I'm not having it. So so I'm not gonna all go jog on and swivel because their opinions mean just to me. Hesti Gerges got into the ring and gave his own opinion as to why the fight was called so off. I was already uh, prepared to go into the ring and after that uh, they're coming to me and they said uh, you need to uh, wait one more fight and uh, then after that I heard uh, that he was sick, you know, he something in his stomach but uh, to me he doesn't uh, look really sick. I think he's scared. I saw already at the way in that he was scared. I see it in his eyes. He's a chicken. The two almost got into a fight outside the ring as motions were high and words were exchanged. If the gloves fit, I will put them on. Okay, but let's fight fit. now, man. Let's fight. Oh, well, you let's want to fight, fight. Well, for free? You want to fight for free? Let's fight, man. You want to fight right now? But business remains unfinished between the two. I want to say one more thing to Shai. First time you fight for glory again, you have to fight me, otherwise you have to stop. And so it will go down May 20th in Den Bosch. 
There's nothing like bad blood between two fighters, especially when they're colossal giant heavyweights. And that's exactly what Chai Lewis Perry and Hesty Gurgis are. And joining me now, a former Titan in the welterweight division, former champion Joseph Valtellini. What exactly is going on here? I don't know, and depending on who you're asking, you're going to get a different story. Um, it started at Brussels, and I had um, I was ringside with you when we saw this all unfold. We had, you know, Gurgis in the ring trying to announce the crowd, saying what happened. Um, who knows what happens? I still don't know what happens, but regardless, we had Chai Lewis Perry run into the ring, Gurgis calling Perry a punk, Perry grabbing the mic, wanting to just yell and scream and pushing in tension. So. I don't know what happened, but all I know is I'm excited for Hall. It will happen at Glory 41, and these two have been going at it on Instagram, and it's gotten really nasty. Chai Lewis Perry feels comfortable in these situations. He always talks trash, but this is way out of character for Hesty Gurgis. Is that a good thing for Chai? I, it could be a good strategy. Gurgis on paper is way more experienced. He's fought everyone in the heavyweight division. Chai is still working his way up, so maybe it's a strategy for him. We saw it against, you know, Doom Bay and uh, Nikki Holtzkin. Who knows? It works sometimes, so it could be a strategy, could play to his advantage, or it might heat up Gurgis to the point where he's, <laughs> you know, going to put more into his training camps, train a little harder, and really want to shut Chai Lewis Perry up. Gurgis said, I never make it personal, but this fight is personal. You can see it, Glory 41. Also at Glory 41, the return of Rico Verhoeven, the Glory heavyweight champion of the world. He's taking on Ismail Lazar, who is like a giant meatball full of muscle that is going to go headhunting, trying to knock off the king of kickboxing. Well, he is, you know, that short, powerful, stocky fighter, and I think that's what he's going to have to do. He's relying on his aggressive power to try to take Rico out, which many have tried and many have failed. So um, he's in for a big task, but man, he's got nothing to lose in this fight. He has the whole world ahead of him to beat the king of kickboxing in the first fight at glory. That's huge. So, I mean, this would be a dream for him. So it was an opportunity that he couldn't let down. And we, we got to interview Ismail Lazar the other day. He's so happy, so joyful, not, not feeling any pressure. He's also from Holland, so he should have a lot of fans in his corner as well as Rico. Also at Glory 41, I hope you like heavyweights because we've got a heavyweight tournament as well. You have Anderson Braddock Silva, you have D'Angelo Marshall who you know had a close decision. With the extra, extra round, yeah. So I mean, the heavyweight division is just getting more and more talented with all these new guys. If you like watching the big boys battle, Glory 41 is the place to be. Thanks for stopping by, you classy to join up a little bit. Thank you, took off my shirt and now I'm all fixed up looking <laughs> like you. You think you know all there is to know about Rico Verhoeven? You're wrong. Spotlight on the king of kickboxing when Inside Glory returns. Welcome back to Inside Glory. I'm Todd Grisham. He first started martial arts at the age of five, and by 16, he transitioned into kickboxing and established himself as a heavyweight from the new school. Now he finds himself at the top of the rankings, the number one heavyweight in the world. His current win streak reached 12 with his TKO victory over what many have called one of the greatest heavyweights of all time in Badr Hari. As Rico looks towards the future, his upcoming match against Ismail Lazar and a rematch with Badr Hari, as well as a growing empire outside the ring, we shine our glory spotlight on the one and only king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. My wife was pregnant again, so the, the third one is on his way. So uh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in, in every, every way. So um, yeah, I can't wait. So it's going to be uh, around September. September? Yeah. So let me do the math. September, that's about nine months after December. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. happened in the festivities after Yeah, the yeah, that's right. That's right. It's. Uh, it definitely, uh, it definitely is a is a collision, uh, a collision baby. Yeah, like after after the fight, we all right, of course we discussed it before, and after the fight, we 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 talked about it again, and he said, hey, okay, let's, yeah, let's just try, and yeah, I think two weeks after we said let's try, <laughs> I hit the bullseye again. So uh, so yeah so. Uh, it's, a, it's a, a little bit of collision, maybe, yes. Yeah, of course, the acting thing is uh, I try to stay busy, try to do acting uh, workshops, acting lessons in between. But yeah, it's like I said, it's been busy. It's been really busy. 
of course keep keep doing those lessons and just try to get more experienced and more comfortable with it so uh, but it takes time it's the same as kickboxing so you know and i have so much so much to do so um, i will never get bored thanks guys see you later I was so happy, like in, in February, I came back in the gym, like serious, and all the guys were training there, it was Monday morning, and I was training with the guys, and then I felt like, hey, I missed, I really missed this. I've been away for like one and a half month. I've, I've trained, but not with them. So uh, then again, that, that competition feeling, that I just love that. So all the things I do next to kickboxing are so much fun, but, Training and everything is, that is, I love that the most. 9, 8, 7, hold on, go 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and rest. It's great to be back because the fans here, they want to see this. They want to see me fight, not only on television, but they want to feel it live, you know. Now it's Ismael Lazar, um, half my size. Uh, I think he weighs a little bit more than I do. Yeah, he's he's he's, a little, he's chubby, he's soft, but he's he's a good fighter. It's always a dangerous fight for me because I have everything to lose. Everybody that fights me has nothing to lose. They just think like, hey, I'm here. It's my chance for the title, or it's my chance to my chance to beat the champ. So it's always dangerous for me. That's why I'm always on point. I'm always training. So, and if I if I run my mouth like I did like I did with Bader, say, hey Bader, if you want to fight, let's go. And that's the only person who had the balls to fight me within four months. And all the other guys that are talking, they they, they won't do it. They get offered the fight, say, well, let's let's relax, let 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 me have one fight in between, and then I want to fight Rico. I say, hey, now you get the chance. If you take it, you take it. If you don't take it, it's also good, but then you get back back in line. Lazar took it, so he has big balls. Definitely, definitely. That's why I respect him, you know. He's a, he got offered the fight and he took it with both hands because he's a fighter. He's a respectful guy. He doesn't run his, he doesn't run his mouth. Um, and he, he knows what it takes to be a world champion. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for this edition of Inside Glory. Be sure to join us on Saturday, May 20th for Glory 41 Holland, highlighted by a night of heavyweight action as well as a featherweight title fight. Be sure to check your local listings for time and date in your area. And don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com, or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as catch up on the Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm Todd Grisham, and we'll see you at Glory 41 Holland. Are you ready for glory?